Hey, everybody. This is John. And this is Wendy. We're How are you, a, John? I'm good. We wanted to take just a moment before Gemma's episode to say thank you. And it's to the international audience. Wendy and I have just been absolutely blown away at the response to the Social Hour podcast. Not just not just with those that we know here in the United States, but internationally what it's done. And Wendy, maybe you can talk a little bit about more about where we are there and, and, and why we're taking a few minutes to say thanks. Yeah, you know, it's obviously when we started this, it was mostly about us having fun and getting to talk with our friends and uh, never would have imagined that people on the other side of the world uh, would be listening and downloading and, and and following us. So it's it's extremely humbling and amazing to me uh, and the power of social media to to get the share this information and, and share our friends with everybody. I think you said we're now uh, been downloaded in 40 different countries. Um, and so that's obviously all around the world. And it's um, it's absolutely amazing. And I love that we get to connect with all these different folks, even the you know, we've, we've talked with a few, um, did our podcasts um, with them. We've got a, an international one coming up as well. But it's so hopefully y'all are listening to them and, and learning more about um, HR around the world. But I, again, it's just amazing to me that 40 different countries, people who are listening to us. Right, John? It really is a, a testament to our community and, and the folks that we have been able to bring on because you're, you're the voices just as much as we are. And again, the international shows that we did in Chicago have been very, very popular. And we really appreciate all those folks continuing to spread the HR social, our word where they live and where they're from. Mm -hmm. And we want to put this out as a, uh, as a notice or a, to let those international listeners that are picking up on this episode and hear this, if you'd like to take part, we would love mm -hmm. to talk to you. And so yes, we're we asking, make sure that you uh, contact me either via the HR social hour podcast at gmail.com email address. Send me a note on Twitter. Send me a note on LinkedIn, wherever it may be. Let me know where you are and if you have Skype. And we're going to look at setting up uh, some additional international episodes in the next yeah. few months. And would love to have any of you that want to take part, we'd love to have you because we'd like to get to know you and, and help you be more part of the community. Yes. We want to say thank you again. We would say it in all the languages, but it would take a long time. <laughs> uh, so enjoy the latest episode, and we'll, we'll see you down the road. See you soon. Hey, everybody. Welcome back once again to the HR Social Hour Half Hour Podcast. This is episode 26. John and Wendy talk to Gemma Toth. I'm your host, John. And I'm Wendy. How are you, John? I'm better than I could have been. We, uh, <laughs> we figured out we had a bit of a recording issue. We It was solved. So uh, yes. unlike uh, John Cates, who we had to reschedule all together, thankfully, yes. uh, Gemma, was, uh, we were able to stop and restart. But this show is coming out at a very special time, so I want to wish my co-host, Wendy, the happiest of birthdays. If you're listening when the show is released, her birthday's on August 3rd, the next day. So I'm not going to sing, but uh, <laughs> tell everybody, what kind, of, what kind of plans do you have for your birthday? Well, uh, as I am of the over 40 set, I have very boring plans for my birthday. But I, family and I are going camping at one of the state parks here in South Dakota. Uh, we've got a couple of campsites. We'll be up at a lake hoping to just spend some time relaxing and enjoying some time. Maybe I'll catch up on some reading. You know, that just sounds like a perfect birthday to me now. <laughs> just relaxing. I wish you the best, and I want you to use plenty of sunscreen and be safe. Yes. <laughs> and know that if something does happen, I've been work. We've been interviewing a lot of people over the last little bit of time, so our our guest tonight may uh, be in the co-host queue. If something were to happen, <laughs> I would certainly be sad, and we would we would recognize it, and we would move on because I know that's what life you want me to do. Life would go on. Life goes on. I do want to get our guest into the mix, though, so I'll let you make the introduction, and we'll get started. 
Wonderful. I am so excited to have uh, Gemma Toth on the line with us tonight. Gemma and I had the opportunity to share a room at uh, Sherm 18 in Chicago and had a blast. Gemma has uh, over 15 years of HR experience, worked in uh, corporate HR in California. She is a senior certified HR professional with a proven history of implementing HR infrastructures, policies, procedures, and HR project management. She is currently a SCORE mentor for the Omaha chapter, the chief disruptor organizer for Metro Omaha and Lincoln, SHRM advocacy chapter, excuse me, captain hmm, for the state of Nebraska, and one of the ambassadors for Milliard Business Association. So, Gemma, welcome to the HR Social Hour Half Hour Podcast. And our first question is always, what's in your glass? I have Moscato de Asti. I like sweet wine. Yummy. Sounds good to me. I don't know anything about <laughs> wine, but it, I'll take your word for it. So, Gemma, how did you first get involved in human resources? How did you get started in your career? I was actually assigned by a staffing agency to work as a part-time HR assistant and part-time admin assistant for a nonprofit educational think tank in San Francisco, California. And that position evolved as a full-time HR as the uh, organization grew. Another person awesome. that worked for a staffing company. I love it. Just goes, to, <laughs> goes to show you got to find those opportunities out there. I think I see a panel discussion in the future. Gemma, you have your own consulting business. So tell us what led you to start your own business. And then uh, part two of our question is, do your clients tend to have similar issues or are they all over the board? And what, what kind of issues do you uh, deal with with them? I got started uh, in HR consulting business as a recommendation from my first HR supervisor. Uh, she said that to always have my uh, HR consulting as a sideline gig uh, in case of um, employment situation where you get laid off or you're in between jobs. It became a full-time consulting um, gig after, I mean, during the recession, because no one was hiring HR at the time, and employers are more likely to just ask a consultant rather than having a, their own full-time HR person. As far as issues, I'm mostly hired to clean up after another person, uh, another HR person who's <laughs> at the organization. So I'm either building infrastructure that's not in place or rebuilding infrastructure. It's what we call an HR fixer upper HR department. And so uh, helping them pretty much uh, make sure that they're up to date with their compliance, whether it's a state mandate, federal mandate, or industry mandate, like for healthcare, for example. Jim, I, I know you will not be offended as, if, as I say that you are a woman of color in HR. I know you've blogged about it, talked about it, and are very passionate about the conversation. You know, what challenges have you personally come across in the industry as a woman of color practicing HR you know, in your consulting and just being out and about uh, with other practitioners? Some of the challenges is basically just trying to uh, be part of the community and at the same time you look at as if you're taking someone else's job away. You know, I'm also an immigrant, not just a person of color. I hear a lot from people in my position with the same challenges. We somehow have to prove ourselves that we're not just a trophy employee, that we actually know how to do our job and are effective in getting our job done. Uh, I've been passed for employment and also been passed for promotion based on uh, my ethnicity. And I think from 18, during one of the keynotes, that was actually brought up as well, that women uh, have bias against them than if you're a woman of color and over 40, that you just have a lot of bias stacked up against you. And I think we need to be better and we need to do better in addressing those. I wholeheartedly agree. And as you as you write about those types of topics, you know, what feedback do you get from your audience that's reading or from people that find articles that you've written? Well, I get a lot of uh, people agreeing with me and some of those who may disagree ask, how do you know? I mean, it's not like people in Asia don't talk to each other. When you meet someone who, who had gotten the job that you applied for, then you know that you got passed on for, you know, 
based on just cultural bias. And there's really nothing that we can do to prove it. And of course, in HR, we tend to not rattle the cage. And it feels like if you say something or if you do something, then you're just going to blackball yourself. It's hard to be on this side of it and see it. <laughs> All right. Lighter topic. Gemma, you were on the Sherm blog squad with John and I, which was awesome. So tell us about your favorite part of being on the blog squad. My favorite part of being on the blog squad is the opportunity to be able to interview speakers and vendors that were part of the Sherm 18. I've never been able to do that in all my years in HR. So to have the opportunity to ask my own questions that can be beneficial, not just to me, but for the readers, was very exciting. And who was your favorite speaker or vendor that you got to talk to? My favorite speaker that I got to talk to was Jonathan Siegel. I've been following his blog, and so when we were given the list and I saw his name and no one else signed up for it, I made sure that my name was on there. And I was glad that I did because he's a very honest, passionate person. And, you know, he really speaks from the heart. And having seen him for the very first time in his session at Stream 18, I was really moved because he speaks with a lot of conviction. It was something that I have never really seen or heard from a lawyer to really be able <laughs> to, you know, reach out to his audience in that manner. Jo Jonathan is phenomenal. I've, I've known him on Twitter for a long time. Um, this was my first opportunity to meet him as well. And y you were much faster than me because I was uh, I tried to get on as quickly as possible to uh, get his name, but you beat me to it. So <laughs> <laughs> you did a great job with his blog. So um, I, I can't fault you for that, Gemma. That was that was fantastic. So it is now time for everyone's favorite part of our show, the uh, half hour question connection. So, Gemma, do you remember how you first connected with us? I first connected with you, Wendy, uh, during Next Chat, Twitter chat. And with John, I believe I connected with him a whole lot more as part of the Nada Shrimp 17. That's cool. I haven't heard anybody mention that. No, that's, great. that's awesome. <laughs> I think that's Love the it. first. Excellent, excellent. Well, Gemma, how, how has networking helped you in your career, and what's been a really effective method or way for you when it comes to networking? What uh, helped me with networking is to be really inspired to share my experience and my knowledge uh, through blogging because I've never really wanted to blog, but somehow one way or another, I got tapped into it and I enjoyed it. So, you know, being able to connect with HR practitioners all over the world uh, which I'd never dream of ever happening, but it did. What I find really effective in networking is really to make the connection of not just following, but actually engaging, to be able to respond to tweets, to make comments when retweeting someone, as well as to help people connect with your connections. And, you know, it's sort of like what Steve Brown says all along, you know, uh, follow our connection, expand our uh, HR tribe. Definitely, definitely. So on that note, who do you follow for HR Insights? There's really a whole lot of people to mention, but um, the ones that comes to mind very quickly, obviously, is Steve Brown, Jennifer McClure, Tim Sackett, Paula Harvey, Charlene Luby, um, Jonathan Siegel, there's just really, you know, too many to mention. Of course, people on um, what I consider part of my connection when we to with HR Tribe, whoever picks up on it and, you know, respond, I respond to it whenever I can if I see it. How do you enjoy giving back to the HR community? I like to volunteer my time when I can, where I can, whenever I'm allowed. <laughs> <laughs> um but again, I joined the uh, SCORE uh, Mentor Volunteer to help with the small business community, you know, to start planting that seed of HR knowledge and wisdom so that as they grow, they know more how to grow their business with the right culture for their organization. Cool. So what's your favorite movie? 
Hidden figures. Oh, I don't think we've had that one yet. I don't think we have either. How about your favorite musician or band? I have two. My husband and I'm always supposed to have one. I said, no, I have two. So as far as musicians, I have Barry Manilow and Michael Jackson. Oh, and, okay. And then as far as band, I have Air Supply and ABBA. Nice. <laughs> Air Supply. There was one day we were, my husband and I were going somewhere and he started blasting Air Supply. Uh, it was... <laughs> It's not something you hear very often, blasting from somebody's uh, car, you know? Well, that's my one of my road trip music, besides the one that John mentioned. On the- <laughs> <laughs> How about a favorite TV show? Law and Order and Big Bang Theory. Well, I have to say, trying to make connection here, Barry Manilow, when I took my son to see Rush on their last tour, dude wearing Barry Manilow t-shirt won the night for the most inspired t-shirt at a Rush show, because <laughs> who would wear a Barry Manilow t-shirt to a Rush, Rush show? Yeah. <laughs> that guy. He won. That, I thought that was awesome. I thought that was just <laughs> the best. It was so funny. Jim, when you're not rocking out to Barry Manilow and Michael Jackson and watching Law & Order or, or watching Hidden Figures, what else do you like to do outside of work? I like to tend my garden, and I also like to do karaoke and play my job. Oh, you also like to go to big comic book conventions, which yes. I love, because you're one of the other people that does that. So <laughs> I got to throw that out because I know that. So that was awesome. <laughs> well, it's you know it's a, we were trying to make it a family tradition, so hopefully we'll do better, so we can attend every year. Call it crazy, <laughs> but hey, <laughs> we're That's awesome. Gemma, uh, finally, if you weren't in the HR profession, what do you think you'd be doing professionally? I'll probably do social work, and a lot of people who don't think I work in HR already tells, you know, told me that I should be in social work. <laughs> I can't say I haven't heard that one yeah. before. Yeah, <sighs> Gemma, I I want to thank you for taking part, especially for my technical error and being willing to hang on a little longer so that we didn't have to regroup entirely really appreciate you taking part you survived the question connection you survived the conversation what's the best way for our listeners to get in touch with you they can get in touch with me either through linkedin or through twitter at gem forever that's g-e-m the number four e-v-e-r and we will be sure to add that to the show notes too wendy what's the best way for our listeners to reach you Best way to reach me is always through Twitter. I am Wendell93. You can also find me on my blog, uh, mydailyjourney.com. Daily is D as in dog, A-I-L-E-Y. Uh, you can also connect with me on Twitter, or excuse me, on LinkedIn. would love to connect with you there. Just uh, be sure to say that you uh, heard uh, chat. Um, also, every fourth Sunday of the month, you will find me on Twitter at 7 p.m. Eastern Time as uh, hosting our uh, monthly Twitter chat with the hashtag HR Social Hour. So please join us there. How about you, John? You can always find me on Twitter. That's at John, J-O-N underscore Thurmond, T-H-U-R-M-O-N-D. Always happy to connect on LinkedIn. Would ask to personalize the note. I appreciate it. If you have a question or comment about the show or the monthly chat, send us an email, hrsocialhourpodcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook if you search HR Social Hour. I know a lot of you are on Facebook, so give us a like so you can see the things that we're posting out there. You can find the show, hrsocialhourpodcast.podbean.com. You can also find us on iTunes, the Podbean app, Podchaser, hrpodcasters.com, Google Play, TuneIn, and Spotify. If you like what you hear, rate and review, help us gain more visibility and continue to build our community. So, Gemma, thanks again for joining us. Yes. Wendy, again, happy birthday. And for the HR Social Hour Half Hour Podcast, I'm John. And I'm Wendy. And as always, be sure to connect. Give back. And network. network. Take care, everyone. We'll see you soon.